Hey you, welcome back. This is the Persian Empire. We've got Kiva, we've got Bukhara under our control, and we're looking pretty. However, whatever the destination of this series, there was always one primary goal, and that was to unite this central region and try and reclaim Persian territories to rebuild the empire. There are two key ones, but in particular, one very, very central one to our goals, and it's Afghanistan. Before I unpause and try and fix the mess that is uh, a revolution, a construction queue that's faltering, although I would add, actually, we've got through like our first wave universities and a whole load of stuff, so we're actually doing not too bad there. And yeah, budget issues. But again, I think this is all solvable. I'm just going to declare a rivalry with Afghanistan because they are our rival. Okay, real quick like, the revolution is happening because we are being a little too aggressive with our laws. I'm gonna just stop doing that. We don't need to push through crazy stuff right now that could upset people. Our budget screen doesn't look terrible. We have one territory in revolt at the moment. What I could do is free up a little bit of authority by getting rid of one of these taxes, but they're actually kind of keeping us afloat. We have plenty in the reserves, but I would like to build up a reserve before we start fighting. So it's for that reason that I'm going to put us into just a slight wartime economy and raise taxes temporarily to make sure that we have a nice, nice buffer just in case something goes wrong. Okay, what we should see now is the threat of revolution. Yep, slowly starting to tick down because we're not pushing through any radical laws. The people are living actually a reasonable quality of life. Take a look at that. Our standard of living throughout the Persian Empire is freaking fantastic, at least compared to most of the people around us. And we've done nothing but good work over the last 20, 30 years. Well, I mean, you know. With militarism on my mind and a war likely coming really soon, it makes me want to look at the tech tree and probably the military one. But I'm reluctant to push through something like modern nursing, even though it would be great because I'm not sure if upgrading their technologies before a war is a very good idea. They might be under-equipped, unskilled, we may not be able to meet whatever needs it has. So I think instead I should go for something that is sort of more universally good, and if it comes through in time, great. If it doesn't, oh well. I'm thinking maybe something like enlistment officers for extra conscriptable battalions. Maybe less exhaustion from casualties could be another good one. We might throw that forward, actually. Just a generic buff for our dudes. Seems fine. And on the economic front, we're actually doing all good. Uh, paper is a little bit expensive. We could import some of the finest Egyptian paper if we'd like to to fix that. Uh, market demands, probably not looking the best, but actually good enough. What are we shy on? A little bit of coffee. Uh, people want a lot of fruit. Other than that, we still need a little bit more coal and engines and sulfur to make sure that our industrial industry is really pumping. We're working our way through the construction queue just fine. Um, I will queue up just a little bit more of these, particularly, you know, like the sulfur, we can get some of that in. Uh, temporarily, we could look to also just import a little bit more coal so that our industry can run as efficiently as possible. Let's get some Ottoman coal and do, 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 do. Let's also make sure we have enough engines, get some Russian trains, just for the time being. And I'll queue up a couple more applications like Motor Industries, and we'll get this pumping domestically as well as internationally. But hopefully we'll be able to build up our own local supply a bit more. Oh, and fruit too. Let's, uh, let's see where the fruity places are. Jeez, the people really want their fruit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Rice farms, I think it's our only way to get fruit. We're going to need to get some more fruitful lands, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. The old uh, fruitful rice farms don't take very long to build. You're looking at seven weeks of rice farm. Much quicker than things like paper mills, coal mines, of course. So even though jumping around the production queue all the time can be a little bit frustrating, if you have these short-term needs that are relatively easy to build, like the opium plantations as well, I reckon we should go for it. And actually, speaking of the opium plantations, they're one of the big things that we should be able to seize almost global control over. At the moment, sure, our productivity, our level of plantations, maybe not the best, but I think that Afghanistan and, and potentially, of course, if this campaign were to continue forever and ever, stretching all the way across this region would secure supply. But even between Persia and the sort of wider Afghani region, I think we have a pretty good shot at securing a lot of good resources around here. Uh, at the moment, they have a lot of uh, coal potential in this territory. Here they have coal and iron and some more logging camps, which would be 
moderately useful. Lead, another one. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's good enough. Opium, there we go, baby. Cotton as well. Holy freaking moly. Why is there so much? I don't think there'd be enough water. It must have come from a valley or... Or glacial gl glaciers? Yeah, look, there it is. Okay, anyway, anyway, there's a lot of cotton, a lot of tea, silk, opium. Look at that, 104 capacity. 92 capacity. 103. Holy cow. I, uh, I think we're going to go straight for the big boys straight away because they're allied up, so it doesn't really matter which way we take it. Let's, um, oh boy, okay. We're also going to try and conquer them rather than vassalizing them. I think. We need some extra states inside of actual Persia itself. And while I didn't necessarily want to do it with these ones up to the north, because they're a bit kind of like sparse and I, I don't know, I feel like these ones here, we should we should really bring them in. Now, you will have noticed on that screen, or maybe you didn't, there are, of course, some potential enemies that could be brought in. If we have a look at the Sway screen, they're naturally bringing in Kalat. And then it's it's Russia and Great Britain that I'm most scared of here. If Russia jumps in, this campaign could end uh somewhat painfully with humiliation and war, war reparations and all sorts of nonsense if they don't though we could be all right uh, a, a couple of events here we're going to take disapproval over a rise in radicalism because now is not the time for radicalism uh and i'm gonna improve my relations with britain who we still have our trade agreement with so um i don't think we'll need to bankroll them that would be uh, ridiculous but Apart from that, we should be all right. We could beg for their protectorate ship, but that is not the Persian way. Before this goes ahead too far, I should probably think about adding war goals as well. Um, obviously, I want to take more than just this one territory. It will make the war a little more difficult, though. So we could maybe take one territory and vassalize the rest, sort of leave a little bit behind. It can be a good idea. I think in this case, though, we'll... We'll probably just just go for the whole shebang. Let's also take Eastern Afghanistan and we'll vassalize Kalat because that's what they get for joining in a war. <laughs> All right. This is about to now, as I unpause, take over through into the next phase, the diplomatic maneuvers. Uh, nobody wants to come in. Not a single sway that would be accepted. Okay. Well, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> And there go the Russians. Oh, yike. Okay. The good news is, though, we have Kiva and Bukhara, maybe, to shield us a bit and keep us safe. All we need to do is try and capitalize on this first war goal. The terrain here is disgusting. I don't know how this is going to go, everybody. Uh, Portugal's damaging relations. Russia sides with Afghanistan after they were swayed. Unbelievable gameplay. Uh, no options here that, that will even begin to work for me unfortunately <laughs> we could offer them russian war reparations come on you know you want you know you want some russian no okay that's fine all right uh what we'll need to do now then is move to our military screen we have a lot of conscripts and uh we could very well need them all actually we could very well need them all now i'm also wondering if i want to grab an extra general I may need one to defend this front because this is our core territory. We can't afford to cede any of our land, really. So we're going to need someone to defend that. At the moment, I think we're just going to leave. We're just going to leave this. This doesn't matter. Uh, we, oh, actually, though, we could get a great flank on Afghanistan here now that I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got this front. Oh, my goodness. We've got so many fronts. Okay. We're definitely going to need one more general. So let's get an additional one in the Persia HQ. It has to be a landowner. That's fine. I'd like to ideally get someone who can just really smash through front lines. Uh, we don't have that, but we do have this gentleman who's charismatic. So welcome in, Mehdi. You're mine. Uh, and you've got 13 dudes at your disposal. Okay, great. Let's mobilize all of the generals. Wham, bam. That'll put a bit of a strain on the economy, but we're still doing actually fine. And now let's activate our conscripts. Usually I would leave some behind because we need to get fighting. But in this case, I think it's all hands on D-E-C-K. Uh, I'm going to activate them across every single territory. They will activate, start to apply themselves to existing generals and armies and infill uh, for losses. Not that, of course, we're planning around losses, but, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, we do have some troops down here as well in the Arabia HQ. How, how far did this... 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's recruit one down here too. Why not? A tactful general. Extra defense. You're my kind of guy. Okay. Great. You're hired. Uh, now this general will be pulling troops from the Trucial Coast, which we can't actually uh, naturally bring through by default. So we do need to assign a different army. Uh, one dude. Looking great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why I bothered, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, moving swiftly along from that, I probably need to start assigning some orders, even though this is kind of only halfway through. I would like to keep an eye on this. Sometimes they can change their mind, like, halfway through. Um, they're not going to this time, because my demands are stupendous. Uh, the Russians are sending 40 dudes onto that front. No one on these ones, and it looks like... Interesting. Only our allies on this. I wonder if they could just squeeze through and just let these Russian dudes push. That would be fantastic. We can't command them to do that though, so let's command what we can control. All right, first up, we're going to need to get a defender. I was going to do the charismatic guy. We will. We'll leave this arrogant one to do a push. So <laughs> let's get many on the defense on that front line. I basically just have to hope and pray that that works, to be honest. There is no plan B. <laughs> like, that. that's it. Uh, moving over this way, this is where it's probably going to get kind of spicy. So, many, many, many a way to push in. Let's take our big dudes first, the big troop, and have a look how the game's splitting the front. So it's got one, two, three, four. That's really awkward. Um, this is going to be the big front line with Afghanistan. I wonder if we should push in from this one and do a bait and switch. Or even this. I think we'll push from here. No. Oh. <laughs> so risky okay actually let's do what i can do first i'm gonna get this guy with his one dude to defend this measly front line then we're gonna get our 13 troops to advance uh this northern front line on the flank no better idea let's get these guys to defend this one and then we'll have only one aggressive army push through here this <laughs> horrendous terrain through western afghanistan Okay, there's your orders, everybody. Unpause the game. Economy just staying afloat. That will start to hurt, of course, as we go to war, maybe lose trade routes. All sorts of things can go wrong in such a large-scale conflict. Uh, having a look at the numbers that are mobilizing, you can see we're mobilizing a lot. They are, of course, mobilizing many more because Russia is joining the fray. Unfortunately, not a lot we can do about that. None of our mates are willing to join our side, so we're just going to have to hope for the best as the economy starts to tank. War now on the brink of escalation. Oh man, everything's been kind of building to this, and I can't help but feel that it's not going to be ideal. But let's see. We've got our assignments. We can back out if things go really disastrously. <laughs> Cross your fingers and hope, everybody. Two arms, men, against 388 Russian battalions. That is a yikes. An immediate yikes up to the north. I see 66 compared to my 22. Oh, you better hope this Afghani push works. 47 dudes. Undefended front line. This one, we are winning. This one, we are losing. This one, we are definitely losing. Maybe we can spin that around. I don't know. There are front lines completely undefended. We could also actually do a little bait and switch. Let's do that. Let's send this one dude up here to try and push through and distract the Russians. I've changed my mind. Economy now massively tanking. The cost of war coming through almost immediately. Speaking of coming through almost immediately, though, we're making gains, baby. <laughs> Yes! Okay, so this push on this front was wildly successful by the looks. Yeah, victory, 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 mainly because there was no one there to stop us. Uh, we are now engaging some Russian troops by the looks. Russia able to magically teleport through, of course, probably through their freaking allies, but we'll see. Uh, this is the front that I'm most scared of. The Russians attacked in and lost 14 divisions, 14 battalions. Holy cow. Okay. Oh my god, but they're arriving up in the north <laughs> against our poor one dude from the Persian coast. No, Kiva. Okay, we have to try and we have to try and escalate this push now. Uh I'm gonna probably try and shift some of these dudes onto an offensive strike instead. I think. Yeah, so 
So at the moment, we're on this front, this front, this front, and this one, and we're winning all of them while defending at the same time. Changing myself off defense in too many places will hurt. Obviously, this one here must stay as defense. That is paramount. Medi, you're on defense. You must hold our core territories in the north of the empire. Everyone else, though, mainly this guy. I think we can switch him on the uh, Fars Western Afghanistani front to, to push instead. Yeah, let's do that. All right, friend. Go hard! It's it. It's bad, but they're repositioning and now it's good. Okay, great. All right. Uh, oh my god. Okay, uh, we might just pause construction while we're at war uh, as a way to temporarily recoup some money from having literally every single man, woman, and child fighting in this unnecessary war. Good news is... We're holding this front completely handily and successfully, almost to the point where we could consider a counter push if they continue to move troops away. Uh, in our satellite territories, we're not doing so hot. Looks like they're breaking through there now. In terms of the push through into Afghanistan, it's slow, but it's working. Uh, we've made some ground. You can see the mighty Persian flag stretching across. This push here also looks to be winning. Is it a tough one? Uh, um, yeah. It is, but actually their losses are so much higher than ours. Oh, baby, a triple. That is fantastic. Okay, now we just have to hope that we can push through here fast enough to both keep our economy afloat, <laughs> yikes, but also hold the Russian bear at bay. Looking at the war support now, uh, many weeks into the war, we're at holding strong at about 85, they're down to 25. We, of course, need to get them down to negative 100, so we've got a long ways to go. Uh, what are they actually pushing for in response? They want to humiliate us. They want, they want war reparations. And they want to liberate... Oh my goodness, they want to liberate this territory. So we are literally also fighting to keep the state as part of ourselves. That would probably motivate me to defend them on, on a normal day, but no. No. We have to focus on this push. Okay, this one is starting to fail. I don't like that. What's going on at this front line? Oh, I mean, took out 12 Russians cornered in the corner. I think we're doing okay. Yeah. I wonder if it's time to push even this guy on the offensive now. Let's give that a go. Because the Russians are pushing through here undefended, and rightly so. That was always part of our plan. But we do need to try and keep them busy on other fronts. Looks like even on the offensive, we are just going well. Yes. Although this battle here actually will be a, a better tell. You can see that the Russians just slammed a whole load of battalions in uselessly here. This battle now, though, has us on the aggressive and them on the defensive. And even with an extra defensive buff, although we're kind of cancelling it out, it looks like we're, we're, we're doing okay. I think that's worth... Wow, look at all those battles! Oh, my poor PC. How is it even keeping up at this point? I don't know. Negative 102,000, everything's fine. Uh, okay, let's have a quick look at the <laughs> have a quick look at the markets. Because we will have lost some trade deals with the Russians that will need to be addressed as well. Should have fixed those a little earlier. Um, anything that's in high demand, particularly on the war front, should probably be my number one priority. Uh, although it looks like actually it's not really a lot of our wartime goods. It's more of our general economy that's struggling from a lack of imported Russian engines. Unfortunate. Probably also explosives, I'm guessing. Oh no, we can get some from the Brits. Great. So if I balance out a couple of these things, I can save a little bit of cash. But of course, really, let's be real. The big gains are going to be made from getting this war done, not from any of this other nonsense. Oh, look, we've broken through into Kalat while I was mucking around with the nonsense. <laughs> How did we go? Minus nine, minus seven, minus seven. They don't stand a chance. They literally don't stand a chance. The following war goals were enforced on Kalat. Vassalize Kalat. <laughs> Welcome to the fold. That is great news for us as well, everybody, because once we've completed one war goal, that frees up our troops to move to another front line. And you'll notice the AI has automatically routed them to do so. We're actually also making gains on the Russian bear in the north while they're distracted in our crappy satellite puppets. No offense, Kiva. 
you're actually great, but <laughs> oh man, uh, I was, I, I, to be honest, I was really worried about this. I sought some feedback last time on what you'd like me to do, and the number one thing that was mentioned Hey, booming industries! I got distracted. The number one thing that was mentioned was that I should take Afghanistan. That was by far and away the most suggested thing, that I should at least take that, if not more territories, maybe even more stretching over to the west as well. And we get this wicked industrial boom event from completing that uh, quest line as well, for lack of a better word. Chemical plants would be good for our fertilizer. Coal mines, also very useful for us. And iron, and, and some of the others. Or munitions plant. Oh my god, these are actually all really great for me. Uh, I don't mind which one I get. Let's support both industries and get the chemical plants rolling. Because we're using the fertilizer for our crops as well. Uh, we are now crossing over into the red. But thankfully, look at their war support. Minus 90.4. We're nearly there. <laughs> Hold on, people. Just a little bit longer, please. <laughs> you can do it. We literally just need to get a couple more pushes here. Oh, there it is! There it is! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so we've conquered Western Afghanistan and Eastern Afghanistan and the mighty Persian blob. Oh my lordy lord, look at it go! <laughs> oh man, I can't tell you how excited I am about that. That is actually uh, very cool. Downside now, uh, the Russians would still like to liberate. Bukhara. Interesting. This is the only war goal left unpressed. So it's now us versus the Russians. They would just peace out straight away. The We could just back out. And I think because our economy is failing so much, we will. But I would note that actually we're doing all right against them. In fact, we've been kind of putting them to shame. <laughs> To absolute shame. But just because our economy is struggling and I'd like to tone down the wartime economy, get the conscripts back to their factories and restore at least some semblance of order, let's tap out and peace deal this, I think. And a peace treaty has been restored. And take a look at that, everybody. The goals on the left, the initiator goals are ours. Vassalized, conquered and conquered. The goals on the right are theirs. And you'll notice there's not a single tick in sight. Signed on the 16th of October, 1884. Mark that one in your calendars as the day the Persian Empire became whole, baby. <laughs> Look at that blob! Woo-wee! Oh my goodness. Okay, we can tone down this um, undue tax pressure on people. Back down to, for the time being, just high taxes. Even that's too much. Uh, maybe medium taxes is a little bit of a push just yet though. So we'll put it on high taxes, recover just in the nick of time. And you know what? Persia's feeling a bit bolshy, baby. Persia's feeling bolshy. <laughs> uh, we will have some market discrepancies to fix up though. While we're in recovery mode, let's start importing the Russian trains again. Hey, uh, now that we're not fighting, we'd really like some of your trains. <laughs> Please. Thank you. All right, uh, build some more sulfur, sure. And then we should actually probably take a look at our new territories, huh? Time to, time to freaking soak it all in, baby. Because of course we're gonna be making a lot of money off this, this now as well. It will have impacted our standard of living a bit. Yep, it's dived, but we're gonna lift these people up into the Persian empire and make them the envy of their Sikh neighbors next door. Our population, of course, massively up. We're now 15th in the world for total pops. Radicalism, as you can imagine, not so good here in Afghanistan. Uh, our institution, though, law enforcement is maxed out, so we are reducing penalties from that as much as we possibly can, aside from maybe enacting some extra orders. We don't quite have enough bureaucracy to incorporate this and get away with it for free, but we've got a lot of trade routes. I reckon we start incorporating Western Afghanistan formally into Persia. This will help with all kinds of things. It'll help us reduce the turmoil, provide better market access. An important thing, particularly actually on the market access front, that's something that should really be addressed immediately. So let's give them uh, our famous Persian Railway Upgrade Special, I think. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to do that. And uh, much to everybody's dismay, I am going to filter through, delete things that I don't like, 
and uh, bring that one to the front of the construction queue. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A lot of these things, to be fair, we queued up uh, in haste earlier and they aren't necessarily needed anymore. Uh, the coal mines are, sure, but we can build those up later. I want this railway at the top. Give the people what they want and let's resume construction. And I'll resume construction probably at a slight cost to our rebuilding of the economy, but I think that's all good. We can tinker with taxes if need be, but at the moment everything's looking pretty nice actually. Oh my goodness, and an election result is in. And that's right everybody, the Society for Progress handily wins. Nearly two thirds of the vote this time. Go you, you progressive yous. Uh, <laughs> there are a few trade routes that are no longer productive. Maybe because we've picked up a whole lot of extra resources from hoovering up all of this territory. Uh, but either way, let's can those. Starting construction gains, putting a little bit of a toll on the economy, but we can ride high for a fraction while we try and provide a bit of balance. Uh, expensive government goods will be part of the problem, so we should probably look to shore up those basics. Again, we could take the trade approach or the construction approach. Unfortunately, we've inherited a whole load of economies that weren't quite as well balanced as ours. <laughs> um, and so it has led to some indiscrepancies here in a few key resources that we're now consuming a whole load more of than we'd like. We can trade with the Brits with a relatively low cost. And I'm taking a slight hit on bureaucracy. I think I'll just kind of leave that as it is. That should just balance itself out. Because these groups are so freaking furious, I wonder if putting them in government for a minute and just like changing a couple of basic laws that don't really matter would be beneficial. Although as I look through, I'm sort of like, well, no, I don't actually think we want to change those. <laughs> it's an interesting thing to toy with though, to put them back in for a little bit, give them a bit of power. It could be worthwhile in, in some instances, but I don't think it is for me. Unfortunately, the Society for Progress still have no friends, but uh, that's fine. We're just going to leave them in power by themselves. <laughs> it's fine and oh my god while the economy recovers and i'm slowly sort of building things up and oh man explosives and sulfur are still so expensive uh, take a look at what's happening in europe <laughs> france radical france another wait what i think radical france just out radical france radical france what so france split away into radical France versus France, and then radical France is different from radical France? <laughs> and then there's this France? I think this is just war. It's Paris. <laughs> Man, alive. That is quite the mess. Um, unified Scandinavia looking beautiful. That could be a fun playthrough, actually. There's a neat idea. Um, anything else crazy, stupid, and, and insane happening around the world that I need to pay attention to? Zulu Kingdom, that's cool. Uh, Chile looking big. It's colonized all that stuff. Ah, oh, and Argentina as well. Nice. They've just completely absorbed that. Neat. A couple more small boys around there for the taken, though, <laughs> if I don't say so myself. Uh, either way, I think this looks fine. Oh boy, and our economy is really starting to pump along and recover now, which is great because I might be able to lower the taxes on these poor sods uh, at some point in the future. <laughs> Paper mills are a little bit short. I might actually also look to upgrade those because of course, you know, it can be easy to forget that as we move through, we are in theory unlocking more technologies if I'm not purely focused on this military bit for a while. So it could be worth checking in just sort of periodically. It's not the most exciting thing, but there's a whole load of efficiencies that I could be missing out on if I just literally failed to check. So why not, I guess. Let's have a little bit of a social revolution and grab the labor movement. This could open up some laws that the intelligentsia might like to pass or maybe open up the trade unionists a little bit better. It's a different step from the militarism that we were doing earlier, but I'm really interested in some of these um, what are more late game social technologies generally better experienced of course with the great powers but you know we can dabble in them a little bit here we're all right speaking of upgrades we're in desperate need to turn some coal and iron into steel so let's upgrade our steel manufacturers let's give it a, a water tube boiler we're kind of on top of tools and coal and basics at the moment so now what we're going to do is go through and upgrade everything that's using the tools and coal so that we're no longer on top of them and then we'll lather rinse and repeat 
and try and advance these industries a little bit better. They are fairly limited at the moment, so it, it really won't be putting a great toll on the economy regardless. In fact, let's also, yeah, let's make Afghanistan the steel capital. I like that. I'm going to start manufacturing some steel of my own. Um, and then, of course, Kalat isn't ours, so we can't really do much about them. They are rebellious at the moment, which is a bit of a yikes. We won't be doing anything about that, though, of course. <laughs> See ya. I would like to somewhat controversially remove the Home Affairs Division, either by guaranteeing liberties, which will help but radicalize two groups, or maybe we'll just remove it, have no Home Affairs. This will help the trade unionists and the intelligentsia, hurt a couple of groups that I kind of like, and also I'll lose, actually we'll lose a really important part of our army, which is our battalions. We probably can't afford to do that, even though it's a good political move in some cases. Any of these options are a little bit hand-tied. Probably my best bet moving forward might be to just try and do something like propertied woman. But unfortunately, even that at the moment will still cause some radicalism. So we need to try and either appease these groups or confront them in revolution. It's going to have to go one way or the other. Oh, and before I can even focus on that, Kiva and revolutionary Kiva are about to go to damn war. Ah, uh, okay. Well, you know, I mean, this is this should be a fairly swift uh, rebellion for us to put down. Let's bring up our expert uh, Russian slaying general. We'll mobilize him. We'll get him on that front line. Should be fine to deal with that. I guess we could actually really bring in a nice show of force and attack them from both sides. We'll squash this rebellion before it gets a chance. <laughs> I will squash the rebellion. All right, you chump, you military dictator, you. <laughs> you like revolution, do ya? Let me give you a taste of what a real revolution feels like. <laughs> a nice little bit of training against what actually looks like, ooh, we unlocked electricity. Uh, what actually looks like a completely undefended front line. Who would have thought a crappy revolution can't stand against the mighty Persian empire? Oh no. You know what, if these guys are gonna revolt over property woman, <laughs> It would almost be a good thing for us just to really dismantle them, actually. So why don't we try and do it in the most aggressive way possible? <laughs> yes. Uh, as expected, we're making pretty light work of Revolutionary Kiva. You can see the Persian flag and, of course, the Kievan flag up in the north as well. Don't forget them. Uh, just doing absolute work. This is no problem. Meanwhile, Revolution is building for us as well, at plus nine a week. We're going to be fighting an internal revolution at this rate, and a whole load of states will cede from us. In fact, most of them and most of our army. Can we fight that off? And do I want to knowingly plunge this into a revolution? You can see that central core territory is going to completely break away. Those are the territories that they still have an active political control over. I think for the time being, it's a bad idea. Obviously. I do want to play around with it, but I'm not going to. It's not worth it. The better play would be, over time, to weaken them in this area. Maybe we need to build more universities. Or appease them for the time being and win them over. Either way, while we're fighting another revolution and eyeing up other goals, it probably is too much for me to manage. Boom. Take that, Kiva. <laughs> Revolutionary Kiva. Quickly squash that rebellion. And we do need to keep the home uh, affairs institution. It's, it's important to me. I'd actually maybe even need to upgrade it in future. So for the time being, we'll hold. We've got our bureaucracy back in the green, which is great. Uh, we should probably continue to incorporate states if they're not incorporated with our extra bureaucracy. Because you can see that the cost of having populations in incorporated versus unincorporated. It, it's interesting, at least, to consider how, just how much bureaucracy is going into those uh, incorporated states. Actually, now thinking out loud, we're probably going to need to scale that up even more if we want to keep incorporating them, aren't we? However, with the economy really pumping and me feeling a little bullshy, oh my goodness, Austria's breaking apart now. <laughs> See ya. Uh, I think we're going to, we're also going to do this. We're going to do this. I want these states off the Ottomans. 
We'll face France, Moldova, Serbia. We'll face a lot of people as an enemy. Do I want those? Oh! New parties formed. The Revival Party. New party formed. Blank. <laughs> uh, and oh my god, look! They want to join the Revival Party! <laughs> Let's bring them in! Now that we've unlocked some sort of communism and socialism and stuff, finally the intelligentsia will have a friend and we can actually increase the legitimacy of this government. Yes. Welcome the Revival Party. <laughs> a slightly more proletariat driven communist egalitarian populist version of the previous party. Fantastic. Great. Does that change? It does open up, of course, a few new options. Taxation options. Eh? Huh? Proportional taxation. Big money in that. Not that we would ever really get it through. Uh, other options that have become available. Child labor. We can get rid of that. You can see that the chance of a lot of this stuff is fairly minor, but some of them are actually all right. Huh? Migration controls. The people love migration controls. All right, to appease the trade unionists who are currently in government, let's slap through some quick migration controls. And then we could consider more serious reform, like women in the workplace working up to that, uh, and of course the parliament. But for now, I, I think actually we can start to get to work on some legal action and get these guys on side. Because at the moment they're working to rule, which is bad for our construction, really bad actually. Uh, if we can get them neutral and then up to happy though, we'll be a little bit better off, much better off. All right, I'm going to declare some rivalries. Kokand, you're, you're my new rival. Uh, and also Ottoman Empire. Should we humiliate them? <laughs> no, but we will damage relationships. Uh, should we expel their diplomats too? No, but we'll just we'll keep them in a rivalry. Damage their relationship. I love it. Oh my goodness, the people here are just doing so bad. The Persian Trucial Coast. Yeah, I mean, they don't have a lot going for them. It's 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 true. They've got a lot of barracks. <laughs> it's a highly militarized area with really nothing else. It's like no employees in any of these industries. Uh, it's almost completely deserted. Even the government barely has anybody working in it. And everybody is starving. That's a bit, that's a bit bleak. But on the bright side, the Revival Party... <laughs> really did a great job in the election oh my god i'm just so proud of them right now i can't even tell you um okay go you just keep doing the great work that you're doing god they're good honestly they're so good diplomatic play in arabia what is this france annexing bahrain interesting i wonder if i should try and annex the trucial states Let's damage relations. Expel diplomats. Wait a minute before I get too carried away. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are these guys in Britain, are they like... Buddy old pal? Because we are kind of relying on the British economy quite a bit. The Trucial States, granted, not the sexiest of places for us necessarily. And looking through here, I mean, I <laughs> the stats aren't great. But it would actually be a nice land grab to complete this set. Complete this set! It's like I'm playing Monopoly, for crying out loud. Let's expel their diplomats. Oh my god. They're having a revolution. Oh. Wait a minute. They're having a revolution? Oh no, look at that! Just as I was eyeing for it. The Brits. The Brits want a piece of it. And they've decided to annex... Oh, just, just the revolting state. Okay, actually, you know what? <laughs> I'll leave that powder keg for them. Why don't we look <laughs> to Oman instead? <laughs> Should I do it? Probably not. Am I going to? Absolutely yes. Let's line that up. So we've got France making a play, our friend France, by the way, on Bahrain. Then we've got the Brits making a play on the Trucial States, and we're going to grab the big bad boy. Oh man, I'm so excited for this. Uh, let's hope it goes through. <laughs> Uh, we could join France in their war. I mean, I don't know why we would, but we could. We won't. Uh, Britain as well. Yeah, we could join them too. Of course, we're not going to because we're about to start one of our own. Yes. Okay. What is this? The Ottomans. Oh. Okay, so the Ottomans want to jump in as well. This could actually go in my favor. 
because Onan can't attack me, right? They don't have a navy. Like, what are they going to do? Swim? They don't, do they? I... <laughs> no. Oh, my god, they do. They have three boats. I think we'll be fine. Um, this is now the front line. And all of a sudden, I got my wish of fighting the Ottomans from earlier uh, somewhat accidentally. I'm going to be honest. So they want to liberate Kalat and Afghanistan. So they want to take my most recent prizes. Well, you know what? Two can play at that game. Two can play at that game. Let's add some extra war goals. Let's really teach them a freaking lesson and push for Mosul, Baghdad, Basra, and Diyarizor. Apologies for the pronunciation. But I reckon if I queue up as many of these as, as I can... I might start with Baghdad, because that seems like the best one for us to pincer through with, and then grab the others. We'll teach them a lesson, and we might, if we come out on top anyway, be able to grab all this for Persia too. Okay, so I actually only really had enough to take two. Uh, I think I've grabbed probably the best two, although actually I, I would have liked the coastal connection probably. Dang it. Oh well. <laughs> uh, on the bright side, actually, the one uh, the one up play here is as an imperial power, if we smash through and grab the middle and leave the sides, the sides are politically vulnerable, weak, and not at all a threat. So it's probably not a terrible thing. Let's push forward with that. Ooh. And we can sway France. Hello. What do you want? You want to make a puppet or a dominion? Okay. You can... Ooh. Ooh. A deal. We give them Oman. They join the war as a backup plan for us. And we secure these two vastly superior territories instead. It's kind of the safe play, and I'm not mad at it at all. We also have migration controls. Great success. Uh, I won't probably be pushing through too much else, although this is unlikely to radicalize anybody. So, yeah, all right, let's 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 slowly work away on building up a public health insurance system. <laughs> it seems like a very odd thing to be working on at the minute, but um, you know what? We've We've just got to do it. And we'll hurt the religious group approval uh, in the process because that's always a, a fun thing to do. Right, we're gearing up for war and actually we're almost there. So let's switch the economy into wartime mode. You know what that means. We're going to raise the taxes by one click to begin with. Pop over to the military screen, mobilize every single damn general we have. And because we have the French joining us, we maybe don't necessarily need to activate all the conscripts. But I'm at least going to activate them from all of these regions here because these were the ones that threatened to split away from me. <laughs> Not that one. Ah, yeah, probably not that one. Oh, well, it has a lot of dudes. Uh, and we'll also, of course, bring in uh, Afghanistan as well. Thanks. <laughs> we'll leave these two out because they don't mind us. <laughs> uh, and now in terms of uh, generals and orders, um, having a look at these front lines, that one is a huge yikes, but it's also very small. Maybe we can get our chief defender <laughs> onto keeping it safe. Let's put one dude defending there, and then let's get um, two of our remaining generals advancing this front line. I have to be honest, I didn't think we were going to be fighting a land-based war here, but here we go. Uh, the French are mobilizing some 120 battalions to join us, which is, yeah, pretty decent. Yeah. Whoa, 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 what happened? What? Oh, they backed down! <laughs> so at the moment in game, if they back down, you get the primary war goal and that's it. So because our primary war goal was to take Oman, uh, we got it. Even though we offered it to the French in conflict, they didn't end up joining us. Nothing ended up happening. And now we've got Oman and we made the Ottoman Empire. 
back down against us, the mighty Persian Empire. And as they look for the railway treatment here, probably to up their infrastructure, I feel like this would be a good time to end this. What has been my first Let's Play, not just in Victoria 3, but actually the first Let's Play I've ever fully recorded on my channel, aside from a couple of humankind sort of Let's Play episodes. So I hope you enjoyed it. Naturally, the viewership declined throughout the series, as I would have expected, but there were loads of you who followed this through, who contributed to how I should end it. Taking Afghanistan was by far and away your most requested one, so I made sure to do just that. Uh, basically, though, the real reason why I'm stopping here is also because I'm keen to move on and try something different. Which brings me to my next point. What should I do next? There are a whole load of ways we could take this. Let me know below. I'll probably run a poll on the channel page uh, as well with some top suggestions from the comments here. I'll use you to get the shortlist and then we'll narrow it down. But either way, thank you so much for joining me on what has been a really fun series. And while I can't really stream much at the moment, it works out even better for me to be producing stuff like this. So thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time.